Most people practice Neville Goddard's Law of Assumption for two main reasons. Either they wish to manifest money or manifest a specific person in their life. However, when it concerns manifesting a particular person or a desired version of a specific person, a significant question arises. Are we acting against their free will? Are we manipulating them? Can we influence someone and bring them into our life without their desire? Let's explore these questions and misconceptions in today's video and discuss how you can manifest a desired version of other individuals. But before we begin, if you're new to this channel and want to learn more about Neville Goddard's teachings and the Law of Assumption, make sure to subscribe so you can become a part of the Conscious Manifesting community. So let's get started. When it comes to manifesting, there's a common misconception that still exists. Even though most of us understand that we aren't practicing the Law of Attraction, but the Law of Assumption, many individuals believe that we draw external things towards us, but I'm telling you that this kind of belief will only work against you. The more you try to force things from the outside world to come to you, the more those things will slip through your fingers. This is why so many people struggle to transform their lives. You need to realize that we don't alter people or things directly. We first change ourselves from within. As we transform internally, the people and circumstances that make up our external reality adjust accordingly. Manifesting a different version of your special person or SP follows this same pattern. Now many people believe that when we manifest others in our lives, we are doing something that is against their free will. Before explaining this misconception, here is Neville Goddard's quote. He says, You do not have to be concerned about influencing others as they are not the cause, your imaginal act is. You alone are doing it as your imaginal acts influence people. Everyone is pushed out so when you imagine you are influencing yourself. So what Neville is saying here is that when you want to manifest others in your life, you aren't influencing them, but you are working on yourself. Your imagination is the only cause. Well, before manifesting the new version of your SP, you must ask yourself why your SP appears in the specific way they do within your 3D reality. Some teachers, even within the Neville Goddard and the Law of Assumption community, maintain the belief in others' free will. They think that if people didn't possess free will, they'd be stripped of their individuality, thoughts, intelligence, and emotions. However, this idea of free will doesn't align with the concept we're discussing. Denying free will doesn't imply that people are robbed of these attributes or their divine status as creators. It's more about understanding that in your reality, others don't possess the option to act in any way other than what matches your expectations, beliefs, and overall assumptions. Because there exist multiple versions of each one of us, depending on the state that we are dwelling in, we are going to manifest a matching version of that person or people. Let me illustrate this with my personal experience. During the phase when I saw myself as a failure, perpetually abandoned and betrayed by others, I noticed that over the years spent in that mindset, I consistently attracted people who fulfilled my expectations of abandonment and betrayal. So what does this all mean? It signifies that your 3D reality mirrors your inner world. If you see yourself as confident and loved, the version of your SP that you manifest will naturally align with this self-perception. In contrast, if you hold a negative self-image, your external reality will reflect that version of your SP that corresponds with your self-doubt. When it comes to yourself, your free will ends in the state that you are dwelling in. If you are in the state of victimhood, you won't be able to take actions or manifest circumstances that will lead you to success. Not because success is impossible for you, but because success is impossible for you as long as you dwell in that state. Because success doesn't exist in the state of victimhood. However, the moment you decide to step into the state where success does exist, you will take inspired actions and manifest people and circumstances that contribute to your manifestation of success. Now let's talk about trying to manifest a specific person while you're also struggling with loneliness and being single. It can be a real challenge, right? The problem isn't that being single stops you from getting what you want. It's more about how you're feeling, lonely and unloved. From that place you're trying to connect with someone who seems far away. This mixture of loneliness and desire can lead to feeling alone and not having your SP with you. Sometimes it can even make you feel like your SP is rejecting you. But the moment you shake off that negativity and embrace the feeling of being truly loved from within, everything shifts. When you feel loved, cherished, and whole by yourself, something magical happens. Your SP starts moving towards you. It's like an invisible force that pulls them in your direction. Here's a simple way to think about it. If you're stuck in a state of wanting, needing, 
and maybe even desperation, you might end up pushing your SP away. Not because they want to leave, but because they have to respond to your inner state. Your SP's choices are tied to your choices. They reflect how you're feeling inside. Your SP isn't a separate island. They're like a mirror that shows how you're feeling deep down. That's why Neville often talks about how the real change starts within you. When you shift from feeling like you're missing something to feeling love, something awesome happens. People, including your SP, get drawn to you. It's all like changing a channel on TV. If you're watching something gloomy, like a rainy day, you're likely to stay inside. But when the sun's out and it's all warm and inviting, everyone wants to be outside, enjoying the good vibes. The same goes for you. When you beam out love and happiness, people, yes, even your SP, gravitate towards you. In a way, you're like the captain of your ship when it comes to relationships. It's not about controlling others, but about changing yourself. If you keep your focus on, I want this, and I don't have that, you'll probably notice your SP moving away. But it's not their call. It's the movie playing in your head. But if you shift the movie to, I'm all about love, things shift dramatically. People will naturally start responding to your positive energy. Think of your inner feelings as the movie projector, and your outside world as the screen where the movie plays. If your inner movie is full of loneliness and despair, you'll see that being mirrored outside. But when you switch the movie to one of self-love and fulfillment, the outside world starts changing too. Now here is what Neville Goddard says. The time it takes your assumption to become fact, your desire to be fulfilled, is directly proportional to the naturalness of your feeling of already being what you want to be, of already having what you desire. Well, what you need to understand is that every one of us exists in different versions. Think about it. You've been through various versions of yourself at different points in your life. The you of today isn't the same as the you of when you were a kid or in your 20s. And if you're way past your 20s, you're no longer the same person you were back then. The idea that there's only one version of a person is one of those illusions that we see in our everyday world. Truth is, the concept of just one version for each person isn't accurate. When you want to manifest the version of your SP that you desire, remember this, that version already exists. Your job is to make it feel like a natural fit. As Neville explained in that quote, the more natural it feels to you, the quicker you'll witness it coming to life in your 3D reality. But here's a little challenge I've noticed. When people want to manifest a new version of their SP, it's usually easier for them to imagine the old version rather than the desired one. And this is exactly why the old version seems to keep showing up. You see, these versions of people are basically like different moods. Similar to how you go through different moods throughout the day, you also shift between different versions of yourself. So when you're looking to reshape the version of your SP, you need to envision your SP in a different mood. Think about it like this. When you want to support someone else's health or wealth through your imagination, you're the one doing the inner work. Your imagination isn't just for you. It reaches out to others too because, in a way, we're all connected. Recreating a new version of your SP means letting go of the old image and focusing on the version of it that you want to see. So stop attempting to change them and start embracing this new version of them instead. It's like having a favorite song that you listen to over and over. You've memorized every note, every beat. Now imagine this, you suddenly hear a new version of the same song. It's different yet interesting. At first it might feel unfamiliar. But as you listen to it more, you find yourself loving the new take on the old tune. Manifesting a new version of your SP follows a similar path. Let go of the old tune, that old version you're used to. Instead, tune into the version you wish to see. Fall in love with this fresh melody of your SP. Don't focus on changing them, it's about embracing this new rendition of who they can be. Now here is another quote from Neville Goddard. He says, It's up to you to provide the necessary link between your assumption and its fulfillment. That link is faith. The biggest hurdle for all of us who want to manifest something is faith, and it's not as simple as it sounds because having faith in something we can see is way easier than having faith in something that's unseen. And the reason it's this way is a bit tricky. When we came into this world, we kind of agreed to forget our true selves. It's like signing up to a temporary memory loss. In fact, some people may spend their entire lives without realizing their true selves. But if you've stumbled upon Neville Goddard's teachings and the Law of Assumption, you are ready for an incredible awakening. So take a deep breath and believe this. Your SP's version that you deeply desire, no matter who that person is, already exists. Because Neville says every possible version is already hanging around. 
All the possibilities are right here, right now. It's not about making something out of thin air or manifesting things from scratch. It's about making a choice, the choice to embrace the version of your specific person that you long for. Think of our 3D reality like an enormous archive of film rolls. Each roll contains all the frames that will ever come into existence. If at this moment you find yourself in a frame where the version of your SP is invisible, that's why you can't seem to spot it. But here's the magic. Once you step into the frame where your desired version of your SP already exists, it'll come into view. The trick is simply choosing that frame and stepping into it. Manifesting your SP's version is actually simpler than you might think, but it demands faith in your imagination more than faith in what your eyes see in the 3D world. It's like believing in something that's beyond the surface, beyond what's visible to everyone. You're putting your trust in your inner visions and feelings, and that's where the real magic happens. Now it's understandable if you're a bit skeptical. After all, our senses are geared to react to what's in front of us, to what we can touch, taste, see. It's easier to have faith in things we can confirm with our senses. But remember, what's truly powerful goes beyond what our eyes can capture. That's where faith comes into play. It's the confidence that what you can't see right now has the potential to become your reality. Imagine it like planting a seed. When you first bury it in the ground, you don't see much happening. But beneath the surface, there's a whole world of activity as the seed transforms into a plant. Faith is the energy that keeps you watering that seed, even when it's hidden from view. I hope I was able to provide a thorough study of Neville Goddard's method of how to manifest the best versions of other people, as he was a great teacher and inspired millions of people around the world. If you want to express your thoughts and take part in the conversation, leave a comment below the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell button for more entertaining, informative, and helpful videos about manifestation. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.